All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Spaulding. Today we're looking at unit one in the AP syllabus. The, uh, the notes that we're going to look at say unit three at the top. It's actually unit three in the review book that you've got. The first two units in your review book are uh, background for the old AP syllabus. They're useful information, but most of it is not part, none of it is tested. Um, some of unit one we've already covered. We've when we looked at South and uh, Central America. Um, so some of this will be review. So I encourage you to get a, a blank sheet of paper, hold it lengthwise, and put this title at the top, but make it unit one, not unit three. Notice that there's two titles, the Global Tapestry and Regional and Interregional Networks of Exchange. Now for this recording, I'm going to move along fairly quickly. So I've also put up the slides that you can copy down at your own leisure. I encourage you to copy this by hand. You'll learn it better and be able to think about it more carefully if you do that. On the left-hand side of the page, you can write this down. In each region of the world, powerful states emerge, some large and some small. Our goal and our focus point in this unit is to compare the governance of each state. As we do that, this is the question that you need to be able to answer. This is uh, defined by the AP, so um, you can count on this as being important. The question is, what internal and external factors affected the formation and expansion, governing and later decline of each state? Think about each of these words, internal, external, formation, expansion, governing, and decline. Each of those refer to important aspects of each state. Below this, I'd like you to write, note the regions and the names of states under each region. For right now, just think, listen, just listen carefully, and then you can go back to this and add your notes afterwards. In the Americas, uh, we, we've already learned about Central and South American states, the Maya, the Mexica, Aztec, and Inca. We touched upon these states in North America, but not to great depth. The important thing to know about the Americas is that there is some interregional connection and in trade, but mostly each of these states was focused within itself. The other important thing to remember is that these are not all uh, massive states like the Song Dynasty. The Cahokia was um, centered around a single city state in the upper Mississippi, um, right in the middle of what is now North America. Uh, Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde were in the southwestern part of the United States. They were also relatively small city-states. All three of those had trade connections um, throughout their, their region, but they of themselves were rather small. In Europe and the Mediterranean, uh, in feudalism and small kingdoms dominated the landscape there. Very, it was very decentralized. And during this time period, there's a gradual growth of royal power. And so we see the start of large kingdoms in Europe. Those kingdoms later become the foundation of European countries. But right at this time, they are, we can simply call them states. In Africa, the Hausa kingdoms, the West African kingdoms, which you know about from early global studies. Um, we'll just touch on those briefly in, in our class, but you need to refer to knowledge from early global studies as you think about African kingdoms. Ethiopia and Great Zimbabwe in eastern part of Africa and southeast Great Zimbabwe. Ethiopia is one of the most important and long lasting kingdoms um, in Africa resisting imperialism by Europeans even into the late 1800s and early 20th century. And then finally coming, moving to Asia, the Song Dynasty, which we've looked at, and then Hindu or Buddhist states of South and Southeast Asia, 
including uh, a, ver a number of states in India, in Thailand, and in Indonesia. In the upper right-hand side of your page, I'd like you to make a note about the other part of the title, interregional networks of exchange. Now, networks of trade mostly were within regions, but several connected, re several networks connected regions. And we're going to look at this in more detail next week, but please make note of this on your page because it's all the same time period. In the upper left-hand corner, make note of two developments that begin earlier, but powerfully influence this period. That's the beginning of Islam and the rise of China. And then finally, we have the whole big picture here, the global tapestry and regional and interregional networks of exchange from 1200 to 1450. And again, make this unit one, not unit three. So what's our goal? To compare the governance of each state. To do that, I'm going to ask you to do two things, to create a chart of facts and terms so that you have this all in front of you. You may want to take two pieces of paper and put them side by side to make your chart. I will give you a, uh, a document, but it doesn't include very much space. So what I would do, what I would encourage you to do is uh, make your own document on two or three pages uh, taped together or glued together. Secondly, I'd like you to make a list of comparison statements. Um, again, I've, I'll give you th this list and a link, but um, I recommend doing this by hand. I will be checking these. And there will be a little quiz on some of these or some maybe that you haven't seen next lesson. I hope this is helpful. Please do uh, respond to the question in today's prompt. If you have any issues or problems, I really want to help you. I want to help you succeed in this, uh, in this online way of learning. It's very different for all of us, and uh, we're all doing the best we can here. I know it's really challenging for some of you, um, and I'd like to be able to help you. So. I've, I've attached a form. It's, it's um, just, it's not something your classmates can see. So it's just for me to see. And um, if there's any way I can help you, I want to know. As always, be well, take care of each other and take care of yourself.